Hey everyone, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? Hope you're all doing okay. Today, I'm doing my May 2020 plan with me and bullet journal setup. I can't even compute the fact that it is almost May. Like, what is 2020? What has this year been? Remember at the beginning of the year when we were all excited for a fresh start and a brand new decade and then that quickly all went downhill? Yeah. But you know, the one interesting thing that's come out of all of this is that I've been sort of forced to try new things in my lifestyle, like in my routine, my daily routine, and also in my bullet journal. I've been trying a lot of new spreads, so I'm excited to continue doing that for this month. We're gonna be making some nice bullet journal spreads for May and sitting down, relaxing, chilling, vibing, taking some time for ourselves. So I'm excited to get into it, but before we do, I did just wanna give a quick thank you to today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you've been meaning to make a website or an online store, Squarespace's all-in-one platform makes it super easy for you to do so, but I will talk a little bit more about them later in the video. Without further ado, grab your bullet journals and your pens and markers and a cup of tea and a snack if you're just watching and hanging out, and let's get started. When I was trying to decide what theme I wanted to do for May, I had a couple of different ideas and also a lot of different suggestions from you guys. Now, the one that came up the most frequently for this month was definitely Animal Crossing. I'm sure most of you have heard a lot about this game already because it's literally all the internet has been talking about for the past month, but in case you haven't, it is a game about an island that you're supposed to grow and develop. You can collect different animals and customize your island, and it's very it's a very peaceful game that you can play at your own pace, and I have fallen down the hole and spent several hours playing this game. It's very addictive, might I add. I've just really been enjoying playing the game and I've even been streaming, playing it on Twitch with you guys, which has been fun. But I think the number one reason why I love it is that I just find it comforting, especially during these times. I can easily spend hours playing it and you can kind of escape from reality for a little bit with the relaxing sounds and relaxing music in the game. And you can also visit friends' islands and play with other people. So it's a fun game and I definitely knew I wanted to do an Animal Crossing theme since it has been such a positive light in recent times. But I didn't want to do the theme too directly because I know that not all of you may play the game or even be aware of the game. So what I ended up doing is combining a couple different suggestions because another one of the suggestions was for me to do a floral theme for May because April showers brings May flowers. What I did was I did an Animal Crossing flower theme. In the game, there are all these different types of really colorful flowers that you can collect and plant, and you can even combine them and breed them into hybrid flowers. And it's a really cute part of the game, I think. So for the title page, as you can see, I drew the flowers in a circle around the title May, and I did all of the different flowers that are available in the game. So there are lilies, which are my native flower for my island, windflowers, roses, tulips, mums, pansies, hyacinths, and cosmos. It sounds like a lot, but actually they're pretty simple to draw, uh, especially since the drawing style in Animal Crossing is pretty simple, so uh, it wasn't as complicated as it may seem. But if you guys want, I can post a mini doodle tutorial showing you how to draw each individual type of flower if any of you guys are struggling with these flower doodles. Something that I actually really enjoyed about doing this cover page is the fact that there were multiple types of flowers and multiple colors, which is something that I don't normally do. I've done floral themes in the past, but they were mostly focused on one type of flower. Like I've done a lavender focused theme, a sunflower focused daisy theme, but this one had all of the different types of flowers, which I think gave it a very fun and springy vibe. And it just makes me very happy to look at. I know, florals for spring, groundbreaking, but I do love the bright colors because it's something that is out of my comfort zone. You guys know usually I focus on one specific color or a very muted toned down color palette, but for this I did the bright red, orange, yellow, and blue. I know there's a lot of different colored flowers in Animal Crossing, but I sort of went for the basic ones. Now one thing that I was struggling with a little bit is that I didn't want the cover page to look too Animal Crossing-y, if that makes sense. So you'll see that initially I had the word May written out in that Animal Crossing font, the sort of typewriter font, 
And if you do want to go full out with the Animal Crossing, feel free to do that. But what I ended up doing instead was ripping out a piece of craft paper and writing May in cursive in the center. And I really liked the way that looked. And you'll see that I incorporate that craft paper throughout the rest of the setup, which was another fun thing that I played with this month. And of course, finishing off the cover page with some polka dotted washi tape. Polka dots is a pattern that I see a lot in the game and it makes it a very fun and quirky vibe. On the left side for the quote page, there is a quote that says, may the flowers remind us why the rain was necessary, which I think is a very fitting quote. And I decorated it with some more flowers around it. In case you are curious about which specific pens and markers and colors and supplies I'm using, as usual, just a reminder, I do link everything down below in the description box for you guys. But for the black pens, I used my Tombow Funenosuke hard tipped brush pen for the flower illustrations, which you guys know I love to do. I love to use my brush pen as a fine liner. And then for the lettering, I actually just used a thick Sakura Pigma Micron, I think it's the 10 thickness. For the different colors of flowers, I just sort of picked and chose from my collection of which markers would fit the color palette, but most of them are the Pilot Sign brush liners, brush pens, and also the colored Tombow Funoskes, but again, everything will be linked down below in case you're curious. Moving on to the next spread, which is my monthly calendar spread. Initially, I wanted to do a calendar spread that only uses the horizontal lines, which I've done a spread like this in the past. It gives a more minimal vibe when there's not the vertical lines in the calendar. But then I figured it didn't really work that well with the theme and I wanted to incorporate a couple more Animal Crossing elements. So one of the things that I've noticed is that there are a lot of rounded rectangles. So you'll see that later on I end up making the entire calendar like a rounded rectangle. And what you see me right now doing is drawing individual little flowers with my colored fine liners and markers in the colors that I used in the cover page. And those act as my little numbers, which I think is really cute. And I like the way that it turned out. Sometimes using a very colorful palette like this can be a little bit tricky, especially for me since I'm used to using a more minimal color palette. So, um, I don't know, sometimes it can look a little chaotic when you have too many colors going on and it can be hard to make it all look cohesive. But what I did to combat that is sort of use green as an anchor color, if that makes sense. So you can see green is sprinkled around it throughout with the leaves and the highlight at the top. And I think that having that green as well as the craft paper brown as a sort of solid blocks of color, make it so that using all of these different colors is not too much. Next up, I'm doing my habit tracker and mood tracker. There's nothing too exciting here. You guys have seen me do this type of habit tracker and mood tracker plenty of times before in the past, but it's just what works for me, so that's what I'm sticking to. But what you can see is that at the top, I ripped out some more craft paper for the titles, and I integrated that cursive font from the title page as well as the Animal Crossing typewriter-ish font together, and I think that the combination looks pretty cool. Also, to save time, I used my handy dandy calendar stamps that made things go a lot quicker. And I also incorporated those rounded rectangles that I was mentioning that are a repeated motif in the game and the different colors of the flowers for the titles of the habits. This month, the habits that I'm tracking in my habit tracker are working out, stretching, flossing, taking my vitamins, watering my plants, no caffeine, which is going to be very, very difficult, but I'm trying to cut down on my coffee intake and also waking up before 8 a.m., which is something that I've been trying to do. Um, oh yeah, and then finally, of course, I'm tracking when I post on YouTube and when I live stream on Twitch. So those are the different habits that I'm tracking. And at the top, I just decorated with a couple different flowers as well as some green polka dots using my green marker. And that was it for my habit tracker page. Honestly, now looking back at this page, I definitely should have added an Animal Crossing specific tracker, maybe like the days that I water my flowers in Animal Crossing because I always forget to water my flowers or the days that I pay off my loans. I don't know, something should have done it. I have regrets. For the mood tracker, I actually just drew 31 different 
flowers without coloring them in and what I'm going to be doing is coloring it in according to my mood. So this is just a fun one and it allows you to draw all of the different flowers to your heart's desire. It kind of acts as flower drawing practice because you're essentially drawing 31 flowers on one page and it's pretty fun. I Because of this, I feel like I can draw all of these flowers in my sleep at a relatively fast pace. <laughs> Just as a little tip, if you're gonna do this spread, make sure you sketch out beforehand so that you know you have enough space for all of the flowers. Even if you don't sketch the details of the flowers, maybe just indicate with a circle so you can calculate the spacing correctly. Of course, I did a little legend to indicate which colors signified which mood. It works out perfectly this month because there are five different main colors that I had in my color palette. So five different colors for five different moods. And I'm excited to fill out this tracker because it's just so, it looks so fun and it'll slowly get more and more colorful as the days go on during the month of May. These next two spreads are sort of my fun spreads. There's no really function to them, but I just enjoy making them. You guys know playlist spreads are some of my favorites to make just because I love sharing music with you guys and getting recommendations from you and it's a fun time. So as usual, I will link this month's Spotify playlist down below if you're curious as to what bops I am listening to. But for the actual spread, I decided to share a couple of my favorites. The Spotify playlist has more, but these are just six of my top favorites for this month. Um, and there's no particular theme this month. I, it's just songs that I really like, but they do all sort of have a happy, sort of quirky vibe that Animal Crossing emulates to me. I mean, I guess if I was going for a full-on Animal Crossing theme, I should have just done a KK Slider playlist spread. For those of you who don't know, KK Slider is this musician in the game and he plays a bunch of songs that are extremely catchy and I find myself singing them around the house whenever I'm doing anything now. Um, but unfortunately, there are no KK Slider songs on this playlist spread. I did, however, draw the songs in the shape of the speech bubble that shows up in the game, which I thought was a fun little nod to the game. Now, speaking of nods to the game, this is where it is very full on Animal Crossing because on the other side, I had to do it. I had to do a dedicated Animal Crossing spread. I feel like all the other spreads, even though I was inspired by the Animal Crossing flowers, they don't look inherently Animal Crossing. Anyone who appreciates a good floral design can, can use it. But for this particular spread, I had to tell you guys about my island. So I did name my island Doodle Land in honor of the little doodles and on this spread I just sort of wrote down some things about my my island so I have my native fruit, my native flowers, my current villagers, also my villager wish list because there are some villagers that I'm hunting for. Marshall, I am looking for you. I will not stop until I find you. Also Judy, you are welcome as well. <laughs> I also have other things like when I started playing my current item wish list, like the elusive ironwood kitchenette, and my current goal in the game, which is just to play with terraforming and pay off my loans to Tom Crook. <laughs> As you can tell, I have been sucked into this game very heavily and I love it. I also doodled Isabel in the bottom corner because I felt like doodling Isabel because she's a queen and we love her. So that is just my little Animal Crossing tangent. Let me know if you guys want to see me do a dedicated video to Animal Crossing. Some fun things that we could do would be like a full island tour if you guys want to see that. I was also thinking about recreating some of my bullet journal designs on Animal Crossing because there is a feature where you can draw custom designs and literally draw in the game, which is another aspect of why I love it. It's perfect for anyone who is creative or artsy because you can really customize it to your liking. So I think that would be a fun video. Let me know if you want to see that one. Moving on to the final spread that I'm gonna be showing you guys. It is my weekly spread. 
I'm saying that in quotation marks because this is really not a typical weekly spread. I've sort of moved a little bit away from that within the past month or so just because of all the stuff going on. I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like all of the days are blending into one and I have not found the need for a large chunk of planning space every single day. Uh, since the days are merging into one, I find that I have just a large list of tasks that I want to get done for the whole week. Um, but then that still also gets a little chaotic. So what I've been trying to do within the past couple of weeks is actually categorize my to-do list in terms of broad categories rather than for each day. So the different categories that I have personally, I have a work category, I have a shopping list category because when I make my weekly trip out, um, I sort of want to make sure I get everything. I have stuff I want to watch, stuff I need to do for Twitch, and then I also have different errands which just means like housework around the house, like cleaning and laundry and all of that. So that's how I personally categorized my to-do list. It'll change week to week, but for you guys, maybe you can split it up by subject if you have different classes. You can also split it up if you have like work, school, um, housework, all of that. And yeah, that's how I'm doing it now. We'll see how that works out for me. And then at the bottom, I just have a weekly content schedule that it just helps me schedule in when I'm streaming and when I'm posting videos. Obviously, a content schedule might not apply to everyone, so you can sort of tailor it to your lifestyle at the bottom weekly bar if you want. Maybe you can use that to schedule any weekly online classes you have or meetings or anything, or you can take it out completely and turn all of these boxes into a standard weekly spread with the days of the week. Whatever works for you. I just like the way that it organizes my brain a little bit more than just having a master to-do list. Before I show you guys the final flip through of my May bullet journal setup, I just wanted to talk a little bit about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Thank you to them for sponsoring this video and for supporting the channel. If you guys have been meaning to start a website or an online store, I highly, highly recommend Squarespace. My website, amandarachley.com, is built on Squarespace and it was super easy to make. I know that a lot of you guys are very creative people. I see all the things you guys tag me in. So whether you want to make an online portfolio to showcase some of your art or maybe a gallery to show clients some of your work or even an online store for your side gig, Squarespace is the perfect platform. And they also have a bunch of other great features that make it really easy to make a really awesome looking website. My personal favorite feature is the automatic image scaling. Photos are such a big part of websites and for me, I showcase a lot of pictures and photos of my artwork. So with the automatic image scaling, they make sure that your photos will always look right no matter what and it's just really great and if you do ever have any questions about your website i know website design can be very overwhelming at the beginning squarespace has 24 7 customer support so they'll be there to support you and guide you all the way through and to help you build your perfect website. If you guys do want to try it out for yourself while also supporting the channel, you guys can head to squarespace.com slash for a free trial and for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or a website. All right, now back to the flip through. All right, friends, here's the final flip through of my May 2020 bullet journal setup with the Animal Crossing flower theme. I hope you guys like it. I was a little hesitant to do this theme at first because I know that Animal Crossing is a bit niche and not everyone plays it, but hopefully I managed to do it in a way that you can all still enjoy and do yourself. All right, friends, we have made it to the end of the video and also the time where I showcase some of your recreations from last month. Honestly, you guys, outdid yourself last month. I have never seen so many people recreate a theme immediately after posting the video as I did with that video. So thank you. I'm glad you guys enjoyed that theme. It was one of my favorites as well. I think it might've been one of the highest amounts of recreations immediately after posting the video that I've ever seen. So that is really awesome. I loved seeing all the different twists you guys put on the theme. Everyone's is always so different. Can't wait to see this month's recreations. If you guys do recreate this month's setup, be sure to tag me on Instagram. Make sure you tag me in the photo, not just the caption. And you can also use our hashtag Hashtag Lil Doodles. Also, as an added little note, if you are looking for more bullet journal and planning content from me, I've been going live on Twitch pretty frequently and I've even been doing my weekly spreads 
live on Twitch every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So if you want to come hang out and plan with me live, come join us. It's a fun time. A lot of people have been actually bullet journaling with me while I'm doing the live stream, which I think is really cute. And it's a fun Saturday morning activity. So I will leave my Twitch down below. It is just twitch.tv slash Lee. You don't need a Twitch account or the Twitch app in order to watch the stream. Uh, you just type in the website when it's live and you'll be there. It's been really fun. I've been enjoying the Twitch streams a lot. We're like a, a little family. So I'm looking forward to seeing some of you guys join us there, but that's pretty much it for today. So I hope you guys all have an awesome day. Keep doodling and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye everyone.